Good evening. evening. Welcome to worship this Monday, Thursday evening. Uh, I do have just a few brief announcements. First, a word of welcome to all those who are joining us by the stream uh, on YouTube. The order of service for tonight, uh, with all of the readings and hymns and everything, are found on our church's webpage. If you go to the homepage, www.cheshirelutheran.org, and scroll down on the left-hand side of the screen, partway down, you'll see a list of services. Tonight's is at the top of that list. Click on that link, it'll take you to a page that has the service pages with the full liturgy and the hymns and the readings, the bulletin for tonight, as well as the link to the church's YouTube channel. As I say all the time, all that information was mailed out by a mass email list. If you're not on the list and you'd like to be on that list, please contact the office and give us your name and your email address, and we will add you to that list. I'm here at CLC the next few days. Um, I'm sorry to the folks joining us by the stream, but I'm not doing communion service. I apologize, you'll have to wait until Sunday. We do have tomorrow evening at 7.30, our Good Friday service. Uh, sign up for that was technically last week, and we did take a few more names today during today's sign up, and now we are full. So if you are not already on the list, I apologize. Uh, the stream is gonna be the way to, to uh, participate in tomorrow night's service. Uh, but for those who are signed up, we have service here at the church at 7.30, and it will be live streamed out for all of you who are at home. Saturday morning, we are getting ready for the coffee and that our fellowship deacon is doing. So uh, some folks signed up to help out with that. If you didn't sign up, would you like to help out with the setup for that um, Saturday morning, 9 o'clock? Is that right? Oh, okay. You get to sleep in on Saturday, 11 o'clock. Saturday morning at 11 o'clock is the setup for uh, the coffee, and it'll be taking place on Easter. Easter Sunday, uh, we will have three services. Um, Lord willing, the first and the third service will be outside. The first service will be at 6.30 in the morning, uh, and uh, Lord willing and weather permitting, we will be at the Columbarium for the 6.30 service. The 8 o'clock service will be here in church. And that will be live streamed out for everyone who is at home uh, and not able to join us in person on Sunday. The 1030 service, Lord willing and weather permitting, will be on the back lawn. Now, if the weather is bad, all three services will be inside. And unfortunately, we are booked solid for uh, definitely for the 8 and the 1030. And uh, we're cutting it a little close, I think on the 6.30, but I think there are still some spots inside for the 6.30 service. Uh, but if weather permits, we'll be outside at the Columbarium for the 6.30, here in the sanctuary for the 8 with the live stream, and on the lawn in back for the 10.30. And I'm sorry, the, the 10.30 service will not be live streamed if we're out on the lawn. Uh, I'm not going to try to figure out how to get the, the logistics of, of all the people out there as well as the equipment, so I apologize. Live stream will be the 8 o'clock service only on Easter Sunday. As always, thank you to everybody who makes our services possible, uh, to our communion assistants, to our ushers, to uh, the folks who provide music. Uh, tonight we have some of the ladies singing for us. Thank you very much. Uh, Martha, for her continued patience with, with, with all of this uh, pandemic stuff and the implications it has for our services and uh, the folks who run the streaming equipment during the week. They do the, all the adjustments to the lights and the sound and everything. Uh, and also to Carol, who uh, has been kind of going a little bit crazy the past couple of weeks because the bulletins for this week, today, and tomorrow we had done last week. So she's like, wait, which week are we on? Uh, it, it, it makes it really confusing for us. So thank you, Carol, for uh, all of your hard work, work with that. Uh, she was here today, then left for like an hour, and then came back and was here almost the full day, which is not normally the case on a Thursday for her. So, so thank you, Carol, uh, for, for everything that you are doing. May the Lord bless our worship this evening.
please rise for our opening hymn. <laughs> of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Please be seated. During this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. Since it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on this night when he instituted this blessed meal for our salvation, it is proper that we complete our Lenten discipline by diligently examining ourselves, as St. Paul urges us to do. This holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death, from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit, he became man, so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God. And to deliver us, took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve. So that we may more confidently believe this and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became a man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities. I give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins, and to, com and to comfort and establish this new testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup 
confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death for our offenses and raised for our justification. Giving him our most heartfelt thanks, we take up our cross and follow him. And according to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. As our Lord on this night exemplified this love by washing his disciples' feet, so we, by our words, and serve one another in love. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of the and drink from the one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with wine of many grapes, and one bread made from countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. May the almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Spirit, accomplish this in us all. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins, imploring God our Father for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. You may kneel for the confession as you are able. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all the sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. Please greet one another with a socially distanced, non-touched, COVID-appropriate sign of peace. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. The Old Testament reading for Monday, Thursday, is from Exodus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, 
then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the homes in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night roasted on the fire. With unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your right hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts. And on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial. Peace to the Lord throughout your generations. As a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this evening comes from Psalm number 116. We speak verses 12 through 19 in unison. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer up the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid servant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord, in the midst of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Epistle is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. St. Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread. And after blessing it, broke it. And gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated for the hymn.
and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. So you want to take a wild guess as to what part of the body of Christ we're talking about tonight? The blood of Christ. Blood is the fluid of life. All the way back to the beginning in Genesis, when Cain killed his brother Abel, the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. As early as Genesis chapter 9, God had spoken a solemn prohibition. You shall not eat flesh with its life. That is, its blood. This restriction is repeated in Leviticus 7. And again, many times, whoever eats any blood, that person shall be cut off from the people. Fast forward to our Old Testament reading for tonight. When Moses is about to lead the children of Israel out of slavery in Egypt, they are protected from the plague of death by the blood of an unblemished lamb painted on the door frames. The blood shall be a sign for you upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall fall upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Blood was also used in all of the sacrifices in the worship of the tabernacle as the children of Israel wandered through the wilderness. For example, the blood of a bull was sprinkled on the mercy seat, that's the top of the Ark of the Covenant, and on the horns at the corners of the altar. It was done to make propitiation for the sins of the people. The blood of that animal, that is, its life, was a substitution for the lives of the people. The New Testament letter to the Hebrews summarizes the use of blood for reconciliation. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. When you actually stop for a minute and think about it, it's not that much different from our own attitude toward blood. Blood still carries the essential connection of life. A massive loss of blood is equivalent to the loss of life. Unless the flood of blood from an open wound is quickly stopped, the strength and vitality of the person who's injured will rapidly flow away. The Red Cross, in its appeal for blood donations, had the effective and accurate plea, give the gift of life, give blood. And thousands of lives are saved every year with blood transfusions. But it's probably harder for us, the first child offered without repentance. The people are just going through the motions. God actually says, what to me is the multitude of your sacrifices? I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of he goats. Still, that shedding of blood, as foreign as it might be for us in worship, highlights just how serious sin is actually is. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. But tonight, we're not talking about the blood of animals. It's the blood of Christ Jesus. And when it comes to the blood of Christ, the precious life of Christ, that becomes a different matter altogether. We can see the connection between guilt and remission of sins with him. Not only was his blood sinless and pure, unstained by hate and harm, it was also poured out voluntarily. In all those Old Testament sacrifices, never had a bull or a lamb chosen to carry the sins of sinners. 
Never had pigeons or doves willingly suffered the pain and punishment for sins that they did not deserve. Jesus did. He shed His holy, innocent blood for you. Judas is scary of all people. Recognize that that blood of Christ that was shed was without sin. Saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. Even Pilate, who knew Jesus for what? A few hours? When he condemned Jesus to die by crucifixion, admitted that the blood of Christ was pure. When the people cried out for Jesus' blood, Pilate washed his hands. I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. As Jesus died there on the cross, one of the soldiers actually pierced his side with a spear. And at once there came out blood and water. That sacred blood of Christ, the very life of God, was poured out on Calvary in the ultimate expression of God's love. The blood of Christ gives forgiveness of sins. Just as Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 1, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. And again in Ephesians 2, we're assured that your relationship with God and mine, that's broken by our sins, is restored by the bleeding Son of God. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near in the blood of Christ. This blood not sprinkled on an altar for sacrificing animals, but rather flowing from our Lord's side on the cross, gives peace to our souls. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether in heaven or on earth, making peace by the blood of his cross. And yet, it's on that night when he was betrayed. There in the upper room, before his sacrifice on the cross, that the greatest shock and surprise occurred. There our Lord Jesus took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. That Old Testament law, that ancient law against eating blood because it contains life, Jesus turns the whole thing around. At the Last Supper, the first communion, Jesus gives his own flesh in and under the bread, his own blood in and under the wine, precisely because it contains life. His life. New life for you and for me. The very blood of Christ is poured out for you to forgive all your sins and to give you new life. In fact, in, in chapter 6 of John's Gospel, Jesus teaches that there is no everlasting life without his blood. Very truly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. Tonight, Jesus calls you to 
come to his table to eat his very bun in with and under the bread and the wine to drink his very blood given and shed for you. Here he pours out his life for you to renew our weary souls. This blood of Christ, this life of God given freely for you forgives all of your sins and gives you and I the strength to love one another as Christ has loved us. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. By his body, by his blood, Christ lives in you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. <clears throat> Amen. Please rise. God has made you his child through your baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene <clears throat> Creed, found in our service pages for tonight and inside the back cover of our hymn. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sin. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. The congregation may kneel for the prayers as you are able. Tonight, each petition ends, let us pray to the Lord, and the congregation responds, Lord, have mercy. For all the nations of the world, that the sins of all people will be washed clean by the blood of the sinless Lamb of God, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For your body, the church, those who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb, that they may bring forgiveness, life, and salvation to the perishing. Lord, in your Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our congregation, that receiving the power of the body and blood of our Lord, we may have the strength to love one another as he loved us, and forgive one another as we have been forgiven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, that in eating your flesh, which is food indeed, and in drinking your blood, which is drink indeed, they may also receive the healing power of this gift of life. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all those for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross that where death arose their life also might rise again and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of 
teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Let your body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Please be seated for the song. Thank you. 